our podcast concerning tech driven justice wherein we explore the role of technology in the light of india's new criminal laws we have been discussing this with my colleagues here at fox mandal and associates to unpack the pressing questions of our times join us as we navigate through the challenges opportunities and ethical considerations that come with the rapidly evolving world of tech and law here we are joined with deepti das my colleague here at fox and mandal deepti the floor is yours please introduce yourself hi hello everyone so my name is deepti das i am partner uh, at mumbai office looking after dispute resolution which includes uh, practice in civil litigation as well as criminal white collar crimes and as we all know this new laws have come i would say it's the old wine in new bottle and uh, yes with some more uh, reforms and some more uh, procedures in place will help us um, in achieving the results in this field so here i am to help you to tell you more practically as to how these new laws can help us uh, in implementing and execution of the matters so deepthi just to initiate the discussion what changes have been incorporated as far as, as trials are concerned so um see i would say things were in place earlier as well and uh, th- i mean probably it would sound weird but i would say thanks to covid 2019 where these rules and uh, procedures were felt essential and necessary for a uh, uh, smooth running of the judiciary system and that's the reason uh, these were all introduced though it, it was not in the legislature in the acts but mm-hmm. as uh, there were amendments and there were amendments in the procedures which were introduced by the uh, courts where we could use uh, this system in place as with the new act in place it would be more easier for us to implement and because it is now compulsory or it is open that judiciary would accept such procedures and we can easily adhere to these procedures so as you correctly pointed out i think uh, the expediting force was the covid times right yes, and uh, yes. but uh, given the circumstances and uh, the way it has been adopted what benefits as well as challenges do you think would come the way while conducting the trials electronically and what impacts the right of the accused uh, prosecution and witness so definitely wherever there are benefits there are challenges as well so advantages and disadvantages always goes hand in hand but i would say it would help us in the long run to achieve expeditious disposal of the matter because of lack of presence of any party the trials are delayed at least those aspects can be answered can be looked into and there could be um, expeditious disposal of the matters though of course the procedures are still yet to be brought in place it is still not in place and the practice how we practice it because everybody has to get used to these procedures so uh, the, the laws are in place but procedurally practically how it has to be implemented as it's still not so smooth so all those things once everything is streamlined it is going to help us in long run there are challenges no doubt about it as to the authenticity as to that they are not doctored anywhere all these challenges will be there probably these are all teething problems in future government can come with some strict norms where uh, they make sure that the uh, software whichever whatever is used is uh, very uh, security compliant so that there is no uh, changes made or no uh, documents are not doctored in any way so uh, keeping a cue to what you said uh, deepthi uh, when we consider evidence collection and examination of witnesses uh, how do you see the laws facilitating and regulating electronic trials um 
Okay. And yes. uh, what provisions would you say are in place to ensure the security and integrity of uh, electronic evidence? So, um, I'll just uh, in the beginning tell you as to what where the trial starts from in criminal matters. Okay. So, uh, we have uh, FIR in place, then investigation is done, the charge sheet is filed, and the charges are framed. Now, in a typical uh, conventional manner, when the charges are framed, the uh, accused has to remain present. And that too, all accused have to remain present. You can't have one accused remain present and the charges are framed. So, the judiciary has to see that all accused are present in court and the charges are framed. Now, with this electronic mode where audiovisual means are introduced and that to introduce through an act, through a provision in the act, it has made it easy that accused can remain present through audiovisual means and uh, making sure that everybody is present and uh, the charges can be framed. So, it helps in uh, saving time. We don't have to uh, delay the trial only because one person is not present. Also, uh, the evidence can be recorded through audiovisual means, where, which is where wherever the accused is placed or wherever the witness is placed, even the police officer, even if he is somewhere and he cannot make it to the court, he can remain present at a given place with through me, whatever means, whenever the permission can be taken from the court and he can depose his evidence. So this is also one of the greatest thing we can see, which will save a lot of time and the trial can proceed further. So these are the means where it is very, very helpful for uh, us to conduct trial. As regards the documents which needs to be proved can also be collected. Uh, like if you have a chat uh, on WhatsApp, or if you have any email, or if any uh, seize and seizure is taken by electronic means, that can also be proved in court and can be admitted in evidence. Of course, there are procedure, procedures in place, there are SOPs in place where how the uh, device should be, it should be certified. All these things are given and they have left it to the state government to uh, give these SOPs, give this certification where it can be accepted in evidence. So this is a very, very big thing, basically. Like you can just click a video from your phone. Now, if that video is taken from your smartphone, how it can be admitted in evidence, the procedure is given. And when can it be uh, admitted? So these are the things which have been introduced by this new act and which uh, eases out the uh, evidence to be produced in court and acceptance of such evidence. So. It is helpful in that manner. Yeah, uh, very well uh, expressed here, Deepthi. Yeah, uh, when uh, it definitely adds to expediting the process by electronic uh, means. Uh, when we speak about uh, electronic summons, uh, I believe there are yeah, yeah, reasons for the recipient to doubt the authenticity of it. So, what measures can be taken to prevent the issuance of a fraudulent or fake electronic summons? And how can the authenticity of an electronic summon be verified and ensured? So, as we all know, summons are served through court officers and it is under the seal of the court. So, one has to ensure that this is uh, from the court officer. Court officers are also given certain devices where the tracking is done and they will be certifying it that this is the summons which they have uh, transmitted. Of course, the new act does not say that whether if it is transmitted on the smartphone through WhatsApp software. So whether the double tick would be assumed as uh, acceptance of the summons, because nowadays we know that people have the option where they can avoid the blue ticks and it's only the white uh, double ticks. So white double ticks means that it has been delivered, but when it turns to blue, we always feel that, yes, the message has been read. So there has to be differentiation between um, delivered and saw, uh, seen. Sorry. So mm -hmm. therefore, uh, 
these things are not defined in the new act they are not being prescribed in the new act however the state government when they will be uh, amending the rules or issuing new rules to such provisions they have to ensure that these are taken into consideration and uh, proper procedures to be given where we can prove that summons are being served and received and seen by the accused because only service is really not going to help electronically it ha also has to be proved that it has been seen by the recipient of the summons so that's that's a very valid point that uh, mere service of the summons is not a, uh, serving the purpose of uh, the electronic medium uh, it is also to be uh, ensured that it has been read and fruitfully delivered right? yes. so uh, now, uh, coming to another topic here in terms of the same uh, line of discussion here, Deepthi, is uh, the mandatory AV recordings, audiovisual recordings. Uh, do you think audiovisual recordings of search and seizure operations are sufficient enough to prevent evidence uh, manipulations? And uh, what, according to you, would be additional measures that could be implemented to enhance integrity of uh, evidence uh, and are there any constitutional challenges to the same? So, um, Gaurav, uh, of course, technology is challenging. It is changing every day, I would say. Uh, there are measures in place. There are procedures in place where they. it has been said that the cameras or uh, whatever medium is used for recording sees and seizure has to be certified by the department from where the team is going at the crime scene. Now, of course, man when it is done, it can be uh, managed, manipulated. Probably through uh, electronic means, it will be a little difficult to manipulate because as, uh, as soon as it is recorded, there can be a procedure where it can be deposited in a custody which would uh, not cannot be managed or cannot be reached out. But uh, sorry, to an extent, I feel uh, electronic means would help to uh, cut down this manipulation or uh, doctoring of any uh, evidence. And I wouldn't say it's 100% proof, but then, yes, to an extent, it would help us because ultimately it would be recording what has actually transpired. Uh, that's a very uh, subtle, I must say, uh, observation here, Diti. Uh, just to uh, proceed on the topic more, uh, I believe that lawyers are essentially not technocrats, right? And every lawyer would have an subjective to their age pattern also, we see that there is a existing digital divide amongst legal professionals. Uh, how do you see the shift impacting the trials and proceedings? Um, yes, it would be impacting, it would impact a lot, sorry. Uh, and I would say not only to lawyers, it would be impacting on the entire system because apart from lawyers, there are other people who are involved in such procedures like police officers, even the uh, judges. Like These trials are conducted more in the magistrate's court. So even everywhere the infrastructure has to be in place. Somewhere some lawyer, I would say also uh, if somebody is not so strong who cannot afford to, who can afford to have good technology in place like for a smooth transition we will transmission we will need high speed of uh, internet so all these things one has to see even the camera resolution uh, the devices which we are using so whether every lawyer can afford or can achieve these uh, facilities it's a challenge so it will take time in small towns or in rural areas. It is difficult whether we have that kind of connectivity or not. That is also a challenge which we will be facing. So infrastructure plays a very, very important role. Today we have laws in place, but to put it into practice will be challenging. It's my opinion. And given your experience, Dipti, uh, 
uh, how have other countries successfully transitioned to di uh, digital trials and given the way that we are uh, we are uh, uh, expanding and exploring what lessons india can learn from their experiences <laughs> very difficult gaurav whether <laughs> india want to learn from their experiences but yes uh, other countries they have been practicing this is what i have been observing that other countries have been practicing uh, digitization long back it was not only in covid which was when they introduced they introduced much before covid and uh, of course we found the need only when covid arrived and when there was no means to reach out to um, justice by people and things were getting delayed but uh, yes i would say our infrastructure our procedures how it is dealt internally in the system has to be uh, looked after um, of course india has different circumstances different situations uh, it's a highly densely populated country uh, of course the system is overburdened with matters with cases and uh, the procedures are different so of course it has adopted this technology it has uh, adopted the revolution i think we should give time to our country and uh, it will fall in place i would like to thank the e committee set up by our current chief justice who has been always wanting that people should uh, have easy access to Uh, the system judiciary system and uh, he has always been pushing for uh, electronic mode to be used in uh, the courts so it's because of his initiative we have uh, provisions for uh, electronic mode of trial electronic mode of conducting the proceedings in court electronic mode for appearing in the court so because of this initiative uh, access to justice has become smooth and easy yeah absolutely i think we learn from our own mistakes we learn from others uh, how they are practicing it today and two uh, two three very important points of the discussion that comes out from uh, of our discussion today here deepthi is uh, one is the obviously the expediting of the process uh, and also ensuring appropriate considerations that follow yeah, in the due process now other observations also is that to educate the professionals to decipher the authenticity of certain documentations when we are moving towards uh, electronic uh, trials and uh, just to put as a discussion point here that uh, the post the so many riots that have recently happened in uk uk has introduced in its academics of students between 5 to 14 how to decipher, decipher between posts made by bots human beings uh, incorrect information misinformation half truths and similarly uh, 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 wrong websites uh, 18 states in the us have already introduced this curriculum california is adding it and to my utter surprise i also found that in india kerala has already implemented this in its education system uh, how far it has been successful how far this is being implemented is something that we need to explore but then yes as we say that uh, the nurturing starts at the younger age yeah. thank you so much deepthi it was very insightful and uh, to my audience if you found this discussion informative please do share the same with your connects who might be interested meanwhile as we always sum it up keep questioning keep learning keep exploring and always stay curious thank you thank you so much gaurav thank you